that we've looked at that circle fractal pattern and the Cantor set and discussed the basics of what it means for a function to be recursive, I think we can look at implementing that tree itself, that tree that we started with when talking about fractals. That tree, if you remember, has a root. That root has two branches attached to it. Each branch also has two branches attached to it. Each branch has two branches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the uh, while this conceptually is exactly the same idea as the circles or the Cantor set, there is a programming technique that's useful for generating this pattern that wasn't present in that previous example. And that programming technique is making use of this idea of transformations. And what do I mean by a transformation? So by transformation, I mean using any of these three functions. Translate, rotate, and scale. These are functions that transform the coordinate space that you're drawing into. For example, you could draw a line, rotate that coordinate space, continue to draw a line, rotate that coordinate space, and continue to draw a line again. So these functions become relevant when drawing this type of fractal. But there's a particularly tricky aspect of this, which is as follows. So let's pretend that this fractal pattern was much simpler. And it only ever, it has a root, which is just connected to a single branch, which is connected to a single branch, which is connected to a single branch, single branch, single branch, single branch, et cetera. In this case of just one branch at a time, you only ever have to translate, then rotate, translate, then rotate, translate, and rotate. But with the more complex tree with multiple branches, you have to be able to get back to where you were previously. You have to be able to get back to here to draw this branch, and then get back to here to draw this branch, then get back to here to draw this branch. Oh, and then you gotta draw these, and then get back to here. I can't even keep track of it. <laughs> this is the magic of these transformations. The computer, essentially, if you write the code a certain way, is gonna keep track of all of these positions for you and allow you to move back and forth between them seamlessly. And that's what these two functions, push, and pop do. Push keeps the current transformation state, so push when you're here, and push when you're here, and push when you're here to save all these spots, and pop restores a previous transformation state. So if you've gone all the way around, you need to pop back, and pop back, and pop back, and pop back. So this is just a cursory overview of how these functions work. If you want to dive into more details behind transformations, um, I, I would say look in the session resources where I'll have some links to some additional materials about how these work. But these are the fundamental pieces for how you need to program this tree. So let's take a look of it actually running in a P5 sketch on the computer right now. So I've prepared it in such a way that it's only drawing the right side of the tree. And if I zoom into it here, you can see the trunk of the tree connected to a branch, connected to a branch, connected to a branch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you look at the code, we've got yet again another great example of a recursive function. This branch function is defined by calling branch again itself. So what are the steps here? When the branch function is first called, a line is drawn. That's the actual branch that's being drawn. Then we translate by the length of that line, moving to the end of the branch in order to draw the next branch that's connected to it. The branch then is shrunk by two thirds, which is something arbitrary, but the branches get shorter as you go further and further throughout the tree. Um, after that, as long as the branch is greater than two pixels, that's our exit condition, we rotate in order to draw the next branch by calling the branch function again. So branch draws a branch, draws a branch, draws a branch, draws a branch. And you can see this is the result we get. So all we need to do is say rotate also, rotate to the right side and branch, and then rotate to the left side and branch. But if I run this, look what we've got, some sort of mess. And notice, what it's, why is it a mess? It's all connected. We've never popped back to one of those previous locations. And that's what adding push and pop back in. Before we rotate and draw that next branch, let's save so that after that branch is done, we can come back to the previous one. And same for this side as well. So if push and pop are put in there, suddenly you can see we have that tree. And again, this is really you could make the, a pretty good argument here that this particular tree pattern doesn't look very natural. And this is because of the sort of precise, exact nature of the angles and the exact number of branches. And if you look at a tree, there's some variation to those angles. Some branches have three branches connected to it versus maybe only two versus maybe over four. And this concept of a stochastic fractal really plays a role here as well. <laughs>